I remember when I was getting started in the industry, um, I heard everybody was talking about that the money's in the list, right? Kind of like what we mentioned before, earlier in this uh, uh, in this module. And um, I took that thing to heart, man, you know, and I was like, I'm gonna build myself a big giant list, um, which is what I did. You know, I built myself a big, huge list. However, the bigger my list was getting, um, you know, the lower my open rates became. And I'm like, why is nobody opening my emails, right? And then, but I did not understand a lot of the things I'm, um, that I've learned since then. Um, well, it turns out that bigger list is not always better, right? Highly engaged list is better. And there's a difference between having a giant list versus having a highly engaged list. So in this lesson here, I wanna talk to you about some ideas and some, you know, still we're still you know, talking about foundational stuff here. How do you engineer, right? How do you create quality? Because um, if you just go and start promoting, start driving traffic to a landing page that is very generic, right? You're trying to attract everybody. You might have a big list, but there comes a few problems with that, you know, having that big list. Let me, let me give you a few of them. The biggest challenge that you will see is, well, engagement, right? So nobody's gonna be, a very, very small percentage of your list will be engaging with you. Now that is going to trigger additional problems with your email service provider, otherwise known as autoresponder. All right, this is where you house, this is where you hold all your um, e lists and emails and you communicate with them through that system. So we're gonna be talking about that in the next module coming up. Uh, but um, here's what nobody thinks about, right? When you have a big list and let's say you email, um, you know, your list and people don't want to hear from you. People don't pay attention to you. People don't uh, respond or engage with your communication, your correspondence, meaning they, do, they don't open your emails, they don't click on your links, all that stuff. What happens is your reputation with your email management system goes down, okay? Every account um, on the autoresponder system and technology, no matter which one you're using, every single account, okay? You, me, every one of us, we have our individual score with that particular EMS, with that particular email management system. Everybody, right? It's like your credit score, if you will. And the higher the score, the better they'll treat you. And most email management systems, they have different tiers, right, of these things called IP addresses. This is, you know, a little technical stuff here, but um, I want you to understand like what's behind, going on behind the scenes that most people don't really understand, most people don't think about. So um, people that have low engagement, okay, with their lists, they typically get put on the lower um, IP or lower reputation IP. What that creates is it creates challenges because your emails now, when they're being sent, right, when you try to send and communicate with people um, and your, you know, your emails are going out from a, a low reputation IP, um, then email service providers such as Gmail, Yahoo, you know, uh, what, what else is out there? You know, Hotmail, all these other um, email service providers, they look at the emails that are coming in into their servers and if it's coming from a, a non so reputable IP, guess what? It goes straight to people's junk folders or spam folders, okay? Or don't even get delivered at all. That creates another issue for you because it's like a downward spiral, right? Here you're trying to build a list and then you're trying to communicate with your people because what's the point of having a list? You're paying for it, right? It's taking up space in your email account or your, your you know, autoresponder account. But if you can't reach them, if you can't communicate with them, what's the point? What's the use? You're just basically wasting and losing money by paying for having this big giant list that is of no, no, no good use to you, right? So we don't want to play that game. This is what amateurs are doing and that's what people are focusing on if they don't know better. What you and I are gonna do is we're gonna focus on cultivating, deliberately cultivating a list and deliberately creating high engagement with our subscribers, okay? Again, we're not going for quantity here, we're going for quality. Now, as we're going for quality, right? And if you set this up properly with the right thinking, with proper thinking and strategies, you can have quantity that is also quality, right? So you can have a lot of quality subscribers um, and you can have a giant list and imagine the possibilities, right? If you have huge list, if you cultivate a big list and their quality list, they're highly engaging uh, with you, right? Then your, you know, EMS loves you, your email service provider that is. Um, people respect you because you do them well. 
right? And then you're happy because you get what you want, your business is growing, everything is good. So we need to do that. So the big question is how do we engineer? What do we focus on? How do we create um, this quality uh, list, right? What well, we need to understand that there is a, um, there is, okay, um, there is a formula I'm gonna share with you here. And that is, let's just say creating, all right, engineering quality. Let's just call it that way. I don't like the red, I like the black. Let's do that. Engineering quality list formula 3.0, right? 2020 and beyond. Check this out. Here's a formula. It's very, very simple. It consists of two things source, okay, plus hook. Source plus hook equals quality. Let me explain to you what that means. The source is your traffic source, okay? This is where you get into traffic. Not all traffic is created equal, okay? Not every click is the same. So if you want to have quality people joining your list, joining your community later, right? You need to understand that where they're coming from matters. Source of traffic is important, right? So we have uh, the whole division of the academy here where we're talking about traffic generation, okay? Um, the highest quality traffic that you will ever uh, that you will ever have. Can you guess what that is? What do you think is the highest possible quality traffic that you can ever ask for, ever dream of? What do you think that would be? In a perfect world scenario, like if, if you know, if you follow this stuff I'm teaching you here, what do you think would be your your most highest quality, the best traffic that you can ever ask for? You know what that is? It's a traffic coming from your community that you have cultivated, that you have built relationship with, okay? We're gonna talk about community building later on, we're talking about tribe building, okay? There's a whole lot going on into engineering that, okay? But if done properly, traffic coming from your community, the reason we wanna build a list and then we wanna build our community and we wanna focus on cultivating that community and we wanna focus on building our brand around that community and serving our community, right? Is so that we can have this incredible relationship with that community, with your community that you are a leader of, right? <clears throat> so that you can tap into those, into your community. Let's say if you have a product that you want to um, deliver to them or maybe you see this um, resource or maybe you create another a product that you know your community is going to benefit from if you have that great relationship with your community already you tap into your traffic this is called internal traffic this is like having your own you know um, personal well of fresh water to drink out of okay it's your community but that needs to be cultivated it takes work right you don't just all of a sudden just get a well in a, in, a, in a real world right and just get clean water no you have to work for it you have to dig you have to get dirty right so roll up your sleeves and do some hard work first back in the days that's how they did it right at least and then they dig it they dig it they dig it they dig it. it's a lot of hard work physical work and then eventually you get to the water and then you keep digging and then you keep working and then you get to the good water does that make sense this is no different right it takes work to cultivate your own community but it's you know for lack of a better kind of a comparison it's like having your own well personal well of fresh water to drink out of so you never have to depend on anybody and that's ultimately that's your ultimate traffic source is the is the traffic that you're tapping into uh, within your community you don't pay for it okay it's free highest quality there there are hopefully a lot of them are buyers they know you they like you they trust you there's a lot of a lot of components um, that go into that, right? Engineering that quality. So that's like the, the, the highest desired traffic that anybody can ask for, okay? The next one after that, like in a descending order, if you will, it would probably be um, like a syndic syndicated, okay? Syndicated. Syndicated traffic. So this is where you tap into other um, partners' traffic that are buyers. Okay, so we talked about there's a module inside the Internet Traffic Mastery on syndicate traffic media. Okay, so you know, if you missed it, check it out. Share with you some cool, cool ideas. This is where you can have other companies or other entrepreneurs or other, you know, your competitors even, send you their buyer's traffic, 
because of the value that you can deliver to them. So anytime when somebody says, you know what, go here, right? Because you know this is a good product or service and they recommend their buyers you know, to go there and get that product and you happen to be that product or that company, that's like the second best traffic source that you can ask for, right? Because it's, you know, these people are buyers, already purchased something similar, um, it's a good match, and you have somebody else's um, endorsement um, coming from that. And so then it goes down from like, you know, obviously we talk a lot about different traffic sources. There's pay-per-click, right? There's Google, there is, um, um, you know, influencer media, there is all the CPA, so all those uh, different traffic avenues that we talked about, you know, there, right? So you have your source. It's really, really important. Don't go for cheap traffic. That's rule, one of the rules of traffic, you know, as we covered in that particular um, pillar. Uh, go for the right kind of traffic. That's really, really important, right? So I'm not gonna talk too much about traffic because we already talked a lot about traffic. What I do wanna talk to you about is this. So if you have quality traffic, okay, meaning like a real human being targeted properly, right? Um, they're coming to your landing page. Your landing page, okay? This would be like your landing page here, okay? So they're coming to your landing page. And your landing page, um, it promotes something or it offers something or it has this thing we call hook, okay? How do you hook them? Kind of like fishing, right? So if you wanna attract certain kind of fish, you gotta have a certain kind of bait. Okay, and you, know, you need to understand, depending on what kind of fish you wanna, you know, you, you wanna go for, there is certain bait that attracts a certain fish. Make sense? Not a, not a you know, heavy duty stuff here, right? But it makes sense. So we need to understand that the hook will determine, it'll be a, a big part or a big component in the overall quality of your prospect that will come into your, uh, into your world, okay? So what are some of the examples of some hooks? So for example, your hook could be, okay, um, it could be a, uh, for example, a PDF, okay? Hey, opt in, leave your email, I'm gonna give you this PDF that promises this, this, and this. That's a, that's a form of a hook, right? So somebody wants to get that PDF, they're gonna opt in, the PDF promises them a particular outcome, right? Something that they want, if you're smart, which I know you are, you're learning from Vic and you're in 4%, right? You're gonna go for, instead of focusing on the product, what the product can deliver. What is that result? What is that outcome, right? People don't buy products. People buy outcomes, representations, things that we talked about, the invisible stuff, right? That's kind of the invisible force. So see if you can tap, if your PDF can tap into their, or speak to their, their, their surface level desire and their core desire together, then you got their conscious and subconscious on your side, which is ideal, right? Makes sense? Now, another thing could be maybe a video. Right? Hey, enter your email here, you know, to get access to this video. Okay, that's a hook, right? Um, another one would be, could be a webinar, couldn't it? Okay, register for this webinar. We're gonna be talking about creating your landing pages. Um, there's a module on that one. But that, your webinar could actually serve as a hook. Okay, hey, attend this webinar, I'm gonna show you how to grow giant tomatoes. Um, you know, that you'll be proud of or something like that. Hey, join this webinar, I'm gonna show you how you can start playing guitar by ear, even if you have never done it before. And you can do that in the next 30 days, right? That would be like a hook. Hey, you know, come on this webinar, I'm gonna show you how we get a lot of traffic to our, um, to our uh, um, you know, to our offers um, that is, um, and without, you know, without spending a fortune on it or something like that, right? So that's like a hook. Okay, so webinar can be a hook. What else could be a hook? Maybe you have some kind of a training, right? That you have maybe a mini course that you're giving away. So your hook needs to be really good, okay? You can, if you wanna have high quality, um, um, you know, list um, that will be engaged with you, your hook needs to be on point, right? It needs to be good. You cannot fake this kind of stuff. Um, where, you know, what I see is a lot of people that are trying to make it, a lot of amateurs um, in the marketing space, they, you know, th they might have like a flesh and a pen type success and then a lot of these guys fade away because they think that they can just fake their way into riches and it never works like that, right? You have to become a student of the business. You have to become the student um, and deliberately decide that, you know what, if I'm gonna serve, like you're dealing with real people, Right, you're dealing with like real humans with emotions and desires and fears and all these things, right? No different than you yourself, 
right? No different, like each one of us. So if you put yourself in their shoes, in your prospect's shoes and ask yourself, how do I, how would I want to be served, right? Would you like to learn from somebody who knows their stuff or would you like to learn from somebody who is a pretender, okay? Don't be that pretender. Be somebody who's gonna be real. So if you're selling whatever it is you're selling, products or services, building your company, you need to decide right now, right? Moving forward, draw the line in the sand and say, you know what? I'm gonna master my topic. I'm gonna master because if you're building your community, you wanna have highly engaged community, you need to be the sharpest tool in the toolbox. That's it, there's no other way around it, okay? So, you know, the moment you decided to you know, build a community and, and run a business and become an entrepreneur, okay, you need to understand that you're gonna be looked upon as a leader, okay? And so people, humans, were prone to follow leaders from birth, okay? We're gonna talk about engineering your persona. We're gonna talk about creating and crafting your community image and perception and all those invisible things, okay? When we talk about tribe building stuff. But these are little seeds I start, you know, I wanna start planting inside of your head here because these are important, right? See, if you just take one of these lessons and just, you know, just watch it as a solo individual training, you might not, this is not enough. You need to approach this thing holistically, right? Because there's a lot of moving parts. But bottom line, my friend, is this. I wanna tell you, I'm gonna encourage you to make a decision, if you haven't already, okay? To become the leader and become the best at what you do. Don't settle for being second best. Don't settle for being just good enough. Let me just kind of, you know, see if I can slide my way my way into um, creating the good life I want. No, you want to become the best at what you do. That's the only way to go. And if you're not going to be the best, get out and then find something that you are passionate about where you can decide to become the best in that particular field or area. Make sense? That's how you win long term. And then as you do that, right, you think about your people on the individual level. You think of them as people, not as just a thing or a list. And so when you tailor your hooks to them, right, you speak to them with that, through that lens. And guess what? When you do this, what happens is they will feel it, okay? When they feel that you're genuine, people can smell a phony a mile away, right? And people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. That makes sense? So what we need to do is when we create our hooks and offer those hooks on our landing pages, okay, those hooks need, need to be good. And the stuff that you deliver needs to be really, really good. Now, so we're still talking about like creating an engineering quality for your list, okay? Because I want people to come into my list, into my world that are quality, okay? Because you cannot complain. Like if, you, if your email open rates right now are down the toilet, you can't blame nobody. Probably because you haven't done the job good enough yet. But your past does not equal your future, okay? You can change your future starting today, right? And that's what we're gonna attempt to do here through this training, okay? You can do this. I know you can. Anybody can, okay? So how do we, um, how do we, uh, um, you know, let's kind of take this a step further here. Let me talk to you, let me give you a, a very important thing that I focus on in my business in creating of the hook and creation of anything that I do, whether it's a webinar, a video, um, a PDF, a report, a training like this, okay? I typically, not typically, always want to have these three things in mind when I create my hook. This is a big secret for you um, that can make you, like, it can make you stand head and shoulders above all of your competition just like that. It's really, really simple, okay? Every single hook that I put out there, no matter what form that may be, PDF, video, webinar, training, doesn't matter. I want to have, I want that to have three components. Number one, okay, I want that to inspire. I want that to inspire my prospect. What do I mean by this? Have you ever, um, have you ever dealt with people or listened to somebody that, um, like five seconds into it or a minute into it, you feel more, you feel, you feel like almost like depressed by just listening to somebody. Maybe it's the way they talk, the way they, you know, appear, or maybe it's, or maybe something, or maybe they say everything right, but just their energy is just so depressing and it, and it affects you on the invisible level, 
right? See, we'll, we're humans, we're, we're incredible things, right? God's fo highest form of creation is what I believe. And, um, and we have this thing called intuition, right? We have this thing called, you know, the feelings, right? And so we can pick up on other people's energy, okay? I don't wanna get too voodoo here on you. That's not voodoo stuff, but this is real stuff. If you want to create quality, you have to be you have to be conscious of this first element, okay? That your hook, everything that you put out, it needs to first inspire that person. What do I mean by that? You have to be in the right frame or the right state of mind, okay? Very very important. I'll go as too far as to say this: um, when you are taking a picture. This is weird. This might, this might sound really, really super weird. When you're taking a picture to put up on your website, for example, right? And you know this picture is gonna be, uh, is gonna go on your website. And somebody's taking a picture of you and you're standing there and you have chaos going on in your head. You feel uncertainty. You feel, you know, uh, uh, desperation. You feel, uh, you just feel bad overall, right? And you're taking that picture to be placed on your website you snap that, guess what? You might have a, a pretty looking website, but that picture could be repelling people just because of how you felt when you took that picture. This is weird, I know, I know. This is like, I'm not saying it's not weird. This is super weird stuff, okay? When you record a video and you're recording a video, but then in your subconscious mind, you are beating yourself over something you've done this morning or yesterday, or you are upset at yourself, or you think, dude, like my life is not going well, or you're like desperate about something, and you're trying to make that video, you're trying to serve somebody while being, while having all this crap going on in your head on the invisible level, guess what's gonna happen? People will pick on that, okay? People will pick up on that. And they, they won't even know why, but they'll be repelled by you, okay? You will repel them instead of attract them. Does that make sense? So for me, it has been really important that I need to make sure that I am in the right state, right? When I create my hooks, when I create my content. Everybody's got problems. We, we all have challenges in life. It's this thing called life, like we're, we're not immune to that kind of stuff, right? I've got stuff going on sometimes, you know, you got stuff going on sometimes. But the big thing I can tell you is that when you create your communication pieces, when you create your hooks to be given away to your um, uh, to your you know, potential prospects and potential community members, it's really important for you to be, to be sharp here. It's really important for you to be present in the moment when you do that. Because that stuff, as weird as it sounds, right, is going, um, it's going to impact, it's going to affect them on the invisible level, okay? So I want my piece of content to be inspirational, right? And the, the best way to do that is for you to be inspired yourself. So when you create piece of content, Okay, and you're gonna, you know you're gonna put this out there to attract people into your tribe eventually, okay? Question for you, are you inspired personally, on a personal level, you, yourself, are you inspired about that product, topic, or idea, or a mission? Are you personally, how inspired are you about that? Okay, what is your bigger vision about that? What is your bigger plan? What is your, why are you doing this kind of stuff, right? Are you doing this just to make a buck? If that's your goal, is just to make a buck, you already failed because that is not inspi inspiring to you. You know, you're, you're stemming from a position of being desperate per se, perhaps, right? And guess what? That is a, that's not gonna be an inspirational piece. That's gonna be more of a, can I just get by today kind of a piece. And then you might put this out there, you might have great content, but then nobody buys it. Nobody, you know, connects with you. Nobody engages with you. You're like, dude, this is like, I'm g giving away good stuff. How come nobody's taking this? How about it, how come nobody's is responding like I, think they, they would be responding, it, it could be because of that first component, right? So number one, make sure that you have this in place, okay? So how can you turn this over, you know, if you have chaos going on in your life? Um, pretty simple. What you focus on is gonna expand, okay? What you focus on is always gonna get bigger. If you focus on problems, the problems will get bigger. If you focus on solutions, solutions will get bigger. The people that you surround yourself with in business, Okay, and I know we're getting, I don't wanna get too, uh, too personal development on you here, right? Um, I wanna keep this down to business part, but business is simply a reflection of you, okay? So your business, your community, your tribe that you're building, your brand, what is that? 
it's it's simply an extension of you right so at the core there is there is a there is a, a there is a person at the end of the day every the I don't care how big the business is take a look at Amazon trillion dollar company right but so they have all these different departments and lots and lots of people working in it and all that stuff fulfillment and marketing and research and development you name it right giant conglomerate however at the end of the day ultimately everything boils down to just one person Jeff right Jeff Bezos okay now Amazon is to the point right now where you know let's say if Jeff you know left the company the company would probably be sufficient enough but early on do you think if Jeff Bezos would have uh, been operating with a wrong mindset or maybe you know he would do things like you know he wouldn't have the big like if he was a different kind of a Jeff back then do you think that he would have built Amazon to be what we now know them to be I doubt it right so in your business if you want to build something big you need to be inspired by that big vision you need to fall in love with people not your product because product can be replaced but you need to fall in love with people and so when you create your hooks right that love for people that big idea that inspiration of a brighter and bigger future for you okay how are you gonna make your difference guess what that's gonna that's gonna transfer through time and space onto your potential prospect okay and so the way that you again again how do you you know how do you help create that um, get around people that are in your industry okay that are thinking bigger that are that are more positive that are that are talking about future um, and solutions instead of problems and present right and so the more you hang out with them the more inspired you will become okay like entrepreneurship can be a lonely business internet marketing can be a lonely business affiliate marketing can be a lonely business I'm telling you from experience right because we are trying to make it you know we're trying to build something and we, we're doing it because we want to serve our families and we want to create our own lifestyles but if but nobody cares about you people care about what they want and what we can do for them so we have to trick ourselves almost like we have to trick ourselves right um, we have to hack the system in ourselves first to not focus on our problems but to focus on the solutions that we can deliver and create a future that's so compelling in your head nobody's gonna believe you okay initially um, your your family might not believe you your, you know your, your loved ones might, might tell you you're crazy your friends might laugh at your ideas but if you are sold on what it is that you want to do find people that will support that vision right and the more you hang out with them the bigger Again, what you focus on is gonna expand. If you focus on your negative family and friends, that's gonna expand, it's gonna mess you up. And then your content will not be inspirational. It's gonna be impossible to have inspirational content. Okay, uh, makes sense, right? So put yourself in the environment that would be conducive to your success. Okay, that's a little winded uh, explanation here on the inspire piece. That's really, really important. Most people don't think like that. Second component that I wanna have uh, when I create my uh, when I create my uh, my hook right it would be educate or deliver value okay educate and deliver value it's really really important why because think about it inspiration is invisible they don't feel it or they don't see it but they feel it right inspiration is something how I came across how I come across so if I'm talking to you okay and if I feel good about me see what I'm saying if I am genuine about helping you, if I focused on you, if I look you in the camera like this, right? And I look you in the eye, and I tell you that you can do this, okay? And I really, and I really mean it. See, what happens is you feel this. We have this, this connection that, as weird as it sounds, you might be on the other side of the world, right? Watching this video in your, uh, on your computer, on your phone or tablet or whatever, right? And here I am, I recorded this video could be months before you got before this got to you right but when I look you in a camera when I look into this camera and I look at you like this and I speak to you right see I can I can feel the connection and I'm sure you can feel the connection you know why because I'm present with you and I know what this information can do for you in your business and when I do that and I deliver a piece of education for you see when I when I come across through the lens or when I uh, create my content through the lens of 
in, like I am inspired on what I do, right? And I'm genuine about helping you. And then I deliver education to you, which is a second component. Or I deliver value to you. The structure of my value is going to be different, is going to be um, I'm trying to explain this to you in a way that you would get it, right? So there is a, there's a way, there is a, it, it matters how we deliver value, right? So if I deliver value to you, f just for the sake of delivering value, um, and I might, cre I might deliver to you great ideas here, but um, you, you, you know, you just receive it like a piece of information. You're like, okay, that was good information. That's one way, okay? But if I deliver value to you in a way that would create something called positive expectancy, within you, within your mind, where you listen to me, explain things to you, and when, and again, this stuff is connected to the first thing, which is inspiration. If I'm inspired about what I do, I'm gonna deliver my value to you in a way that will create positive expectancy for you, okay? And what that's gonna do in your head, in your brain, is it will give you this sense of, of feeling that, you know what? I have not done that before, I don't know how to do that, but I can see how that could work. It creates this positive sense of expectancy for you that even if you have never done it, but you could, you feel like you could do it, right? See, this is a very, very important piece of, um, you know, a, a piece in your in, in creating of your, of your content or your hook because you want your your value, okay, to be delivered in a way that would create positive expectancy. So every piece that I put out, right, whether it's a webinar or a hook, I want to have those components present, okay? Because I'm stacking odds in my favor. I'm not doing this, you know, by trying to manipulate people. I'm being genuine about it, okay? Which is the only way to go, because uh, I'm building for the future. Make sense? So you deliver value. The reason this is important is because, you know, to the degree that you're valuable in the marketplace, will you be rewarded? And will you be in demand, right? Money the law that, that governs money and compensation states three things, okay? The need for what you do, okay? Is there a need for what, what we do? Is there a need for, you know, somebody to teach this kind of stuff out there in the, in the entrepreneurship space? Of course, right? 64% or 63% of businesses around the world say traffic and conversions is our biggest challenge. Is there a need for what we do? even with this product, Internet Traffic Academy. Absolutely, there's a tremendous need for this information out there, right? So there's a great need for what we do. The second part of the formula is my ability to fulfill the need. If I can fulfill the need, that void, better than somebody else, okay, I'm, I'll get rewarded more, okay? So for you, what is it that you're doing? What products are you marketing? right? The need for what you do. Is there a need for what you do? Probably there are. We have nothing to do with that. We just have to find the right niche, okay, and, and you know, and find the need. Number two, this is where you're going to get really, really good at fulfilling that need. And fulfilling that need is going to be, you know, the stuff that I'm talking to you about right now, okay? It's understanding that you are the guy or the gal that's in charge of your business, and your business is a reflection of you. Your content is a reflection of what's going on in your head, right? How you feel is how your prospect and customer is going to feel. That's really important. You cannot blame somebody else for, for your failures, okay? You, like, if you didn't understand this and you've been failing, 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 yeah, you know, you might have an excuse, but not moving forward because I'm telling you right now uh, how this stuff works. And whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, you don't have to agree with the physics of electricity or the gravity or anything like that, but we feel its presence, right? It doesn't doesn't matter if a good intention, a good intentioned person or even a baby steps out from a 10-story tall building and, you know, we, we all know the outcome. It doesn't matter if that person, do, you know, done phenomenal things in the world and for humanity, it doesn't matter. When they fall, they're gonna crash. Okay, when you, when, you, when you follow the laws that govern success and principles that bring results that you want, right, you will succeed. And if you don't, you cannot blame somebody for your, you know, for your uh, failures. So the need for what you do, and then uh, you know, your ability to do it, to deliver the need, to fulfill the need. And then thing number three is how difficult will there be to replace you, okay? To the degree that you are difficult to replace, will you be compensated? So if you wanna make more money, if you wanna sell more stuff, it's going to start with you understanding how to structure your hooks in a way that will pull right kind of prospects into your world. And then 
the stuff we're talking about here, right? When we're talking about tribe building mastery stuff, um, these things connect. And so you can build a tribe of people that will be fanatical about you, about your, your ideas, about your passion, about things that you're talking about. And that's ultimately what we wanna create. Does that make sense? Okay, so to the degree that you can deliver this education in a way that will create and, this, and foster the sense of positive expectancy in that prospect's mind, okay, will, you, will your hook be successful? Okay, so again, we're talking about how do we engineer. And then thing number three here, okay, component number three is I want to motivate. I want to motivate, I want that hook to motivate, to motivate that prospect to take action, okay? Not manipulate, not, not force them, but I want, to, I want them to be motivated right here. These three things, when I create my hooks, again, can be a PDF, can be a video, heck, even when you're writing an email, have these three, three things in mind, okay? When you create a video, have these three things in mind. When you do a webinar, when you do a training, um, you know, your community, Okay, when you're building eStage, for example, we're gonna talk a lot more about that in Tribe Building Mastery. When you are creating your content, when you're working on your business, make sure that every, com every piece of that you put out there okay, has these three components. It needs to inspire, it needs to educate, deliver value, and it needs to motivate them to take action on whatever you want them to do next. Okay, so a video uh, call to action might be enter your email. That's a call to action, so the video needs to motivate them for them to enter their email and go on to the next piece, right? If it's a sales video, for example, and you're trying to sell something, it needs to motivate that prospect to take action and buy your thing. Make sense? So that's the difference between quality versus quantity, right? And so obviously this should be pretty clear to you right now that going for quality is the only way to go, okay? Quantity will come later but it needs to be quality first and then quantity, okay? So let's go on to the next module and we're gonna start talking about um, tools, okay? For building our, um, you know, creating our landing pages and some of the things that we need uh, from a um, kind of a technical uh, standpoint, you know, some tools that we need. And then we're gonna continue to talk about putting it all together. I'll see you next module.